today we'll be testing out Hemiway Cruiser. This is the most spec'd out production model we'll be unboxing and testing on this channel. This cruiser has the biggest battery from all other e-bikes I have tried so far. This is the first time I'm trying a 750 watt brushless geared motor. So I'm really curious to see the power output and the range on this model. But the coolest part, this bike has 26 inches giant fat tires. So let's finish unboxing and see how this bike performs, components, quality, comfort and how does it compare to other e-bikes I have tested so far on this channel. Oh, this is nice. So it's packed very well and usually before you unpack, if everything's properly done, uh, usually nicer products have much better packaging and here I can see from the start that this is going to be a very nice e-bike. I really like this touch having all the hardware here not in a plastic bag and having the Loctite on the hardware. I have not seen this on any other bike so far. From the start I can tell you this e-bike has a very cool paint finish. The entire bike feels well put together, it is solid. I only wish the brakes were hydraulics and this price range. Let's go over the specs and take a closer look at the components. The frame is 6061 aluminum, good size. The motor is 750 watt geared. We have 5 speed levels and it does not matter what gear you are in. It will pull the same intensity up to the maximum speed and torque if you engage the throttle and that's a good thing. If you're not pedaling and you want to pass another bike rider quickly or get out of the way of a car or a traffic situation, you don't have to shift speed levels. Just engage the throttle. If you're in a pedal assist mode, the bike will accelerate based on the 5 speed levels programmed. This is a feature that I have not seen in any other e-bike so far. The battery, which is one of the most important parts of any e-bike. And we have here a 48 volt system and a whopping 17.5 amps capacity or 840 watt hour Samsung lithium ion battery. This brand is advertising 60 miles on a single charge and that's most likely with a 150 to 175 pound rider and the mid settings with assist. I'll test with maximum speed and light assist and I need to mention I weigh 215 pounds. Controller, 48 volts and 22 amp. Much higher discharge compared to other e-bikes that range from 14 amps to 18 amps that I tried and I tested on this channel. Guys, we have 26 inch huge fat tires. I feel like the wheels act as suspension already. I was able to get through any terrain with ease. Front fork is working exceptionally well. We have a coil suspension, 80 millimeters of travel, preload adjustments and lockout. It feels like an upgraded air fork. Lights and uh, let me show you guys the difference. Put the shades are on. And the shed lights, you can um, you can actually see. You the, can see the the, the yeah. shed light part. Yeah, it's really yeah. powerful. All right, so you're good to go. You can okay. adjust the way you like it, but uh, yeah. That's good. Let me go. Let me go check it out. Well, yeah, you have to press one, two, three. <laughs> So guys, this is the light of the bike and the shred lights. Look how powerful it is. We have to check if it has uh, or not the sensor. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't. It doesn't, right? Because this is one of the things that I don't like is that. Yeah, it doesn't have the sensor here. It kicks in full on. It's not measuring how much torque you're putting you in. Apply, yeah. 
so it really launches and you gotta be careful with it well i think uh, there's advantages and there's disadvantages right yes so advantages that uh for off-road if you go let's say you know bad terrain hills and stuff that'll be helpful yes in the city it's a disadvantage because you have to be careful not to really gun it right and you and when you gun it you gotta control it is but it uh, my question is 1000 this is 750 with uh it has the um, the gearbox yes. so amplifies the power yes. that's why you get so much, so much range because it's uh, it's heavy it's 72 pounds it's really heavy yes but um, my question is when you started did you use the throttle or the pedaling i use the pedaling the pedaling yes i feel like it's it's okay it's like i try with sensor it's yes. much smoother yes but uh i like it like that i i, don't I know. mean the punch you have to get used to the punch yeah 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 you gotta get used to the punch I think because you're lighter, that's why I feel it more. I'm heavier, so it's Maybe, more like mild in my yeah, case exactly. here. Like I feel the front wheel, the front wheel lifting. Yeah, it's powerful. Yeah. Right, it's a very powerful bike. The front wheel will lift, so you gotta control it if you push all the way. Yeah. But it's overall, I actually really like the feel of it. Even though it's a big and heavy bike, it felt very nimble on the on the off road. It is very sexy. I think that I think they did a good job. I think it did a good job. On it, it needs hydraulic brakes. It needs hydraulic brakes. brakes. Yes. And I think it will be perfect. And otherwise, if you don't if you don't put hydraulic brakes, you have to really control um, the cable and adjust it properly so that when you press all the way, you're really getting the maximum power. For example, yeah. this one needs adjustment. Yeah, it needs adjustment. Too loose. Yes. Yep. This one is good. But I would adjust it a little further. The LCD display is a medium size showing power level output, battery capacity, pedal assist level and speed in real time. The visibility is great and easy to read. Maximum speed shown on LCD was 26 miles an hour and 24 miles an hour on GPS. And that was on a flat pedaling. You can see here that the speed level is a bit off compared to the GPS. Only throttle, you'll get between 22 to 23 miles maximum speed on flats. You can also charge your phone on the go with a USB port, which is a pretty cool feature. The startup and torque are powerful and will handle any type of terrain. The C bike will be perfect to take it into the woods, camping, or hunting. I need to mention that the 26 by 4 inches Kenda puncture resistant tires will provide you a good grip even in the most challenging terrains and weather conditions. We have a standard 7-speed Shimano cassette and shifter, 180mm mechanical disc brakes that needed to be set up out of the box, I wish they were hydraulics, we have a cool big headlight, the throw of the light beam it's crazy powerful compared to other e-bikes I have tested so far. Half twist throttle, comfortable intuitive, the rear rack has a nice wooden panel integrated, nice touch here with the company logo engraved. Total payload capacity 350 pounds and this bike comes with a lot of accessories that will satisfy the peakiest rider. The integrated brake headlight is activated when the brakes are applied and both front as well as rear wheels are equipped with deflective coils which ensures the rider's safety at night. Range. I was able to cover 31 miles on the maximum fifth level and this is by far the longest range on any electric bike I have tested so far. Taking in consideration how massive this bike is and 72 pounds weight, this is an impressive result. I wish we had 4 amp charger for this size battery. All around, this is a great e-bike option for outdoor enthusiasts, powerful and comfortable. If you live in one bedroom or studio apartment in New York City, this e-bike size will be an issue getting in and out. But if you own a house or a storage nearby your place, the Hemiway Cruiser is one of the best e-bike options priced at $1699. US dollars. Guys, if you like this model as much as I did, check out the link I placed down in the description box. If you find this video informative, please like and share it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.